I don't care if you're shooting digital or scanning film, the new features this year in Lightroom are pretty cool, even though there's not a ton of them. Now, it's also supposed to be a little faster and optimized, and we'll see about that. But today I'm going to show you, well, the one feature that's actually the most important. That time of year again, when the big apps start pushing out their 2024 updates, Lightroom just hit, and there's two main features. With all these apps, including Capture One, coming out with new features, trying to keep up with each other, it's great for us. Now, let's jump right into Lightroom. What they're promoting, of course, the most is the new lens blur effect. So you too now can have the cheesy cell phone style blur on all of your professional photos and you can select and you can control the distance and there's all these settings in here and you can have it auto select or you can select an area and it's honestly okay it's pretty cool but i have to say probably what the world needs more of is is not more fake bokeh but i i, I digress it's going to be useful but that that's not the main feature I'm focusing on today because the truth is most of us using this are probably trying to get bokeh in camera. But let's look at what I think is a much more significant feature. And actually, it's one of the only areas in which Capture One still had an edge on Lightroom, leaving Capture One to scramble to keep up even more. And it does look like Capture One might be trying to come out with some AI tools this year. What's new is point color. Now, long story short, point color is where instead of just the mixer, which does work pretty well, you can get really precise and most people are not even close to using what they're capable of in the color mixer. If you use presets like my Filmus presets or any of my presets, you know that the magic happens in how we use the curves, the tones, the shadows, and the nuances of that color mixer. But one thing that Capture One always had even though I could usually get the same result in Lightroom because I have a ton of experience with Lightroom and have been using it since day one, point color is really cool. Let's take an example. Here I have this Yosemite shot that I just uploaded to my page, okay? This has the new Cine Amber effect from Autumn and Amber, and I can turn it up, down, adjust it, and get like a really nice color here, right? So let's do this, but I might take this here and say, okay, this is perfect for what I'm doing, but I want to micro control this kind of orangey grass just a little bit. I can select the eyedropper right up here. Then I can go down and select the color that I want to sample, right? So I'm going to go down kind of the oranges and I can select that. And I could take that and say, let's, let's hue shift that just a little bit. Maybe I, maybe I don't want those to be quite so red. I could mix them up. See, I can go any direction I want and I can control the hue, the saturation and the luminance, just like I can in the mixer and the HSL tools. I can also control the range. If I click visualize range, you're going to see it turns everything black and white except what I've selected. And so you can see how basically I'm controlling the feather of how fine it selects. So the controls are a little bit different than Capture One, but I do think it's really intuitive how it kind of shows this input and output of what you've done, right? So it shows here your selected color and your output color. It's actually quite intuitive. Now, this obviously is too extreme. I'm just going to go up a teeny tiny bit with the hue shift on this. Let's turn visualize range off and we can now see the whole image. So I just adjusted that and I can, of course, delete the swatch, delete all swatches, and I still have all my mixer controls. So if you apply a preset, just in case you're wondering, let's say you apply an amber preset, you apply a Filmus preset, this is an additional layer you can add on top of that. I can also do really specific things building these in. So this is just going to make it even better when I'm creating presets for you guys, things like Filmus, I can be that much more precise precise, which is cool for me. And it's cool for you because you can say, hey, I don't quite like how that came out on my Portra 400 look. I just want to, I just want to tweak that a little bit. Let's come in for a close up to emphasize this. Control over those things is power. Don't push the sliders up just because you can push them up when you need to, but it gets better. Let me show you one more thing because this is really cool. Let's go to another photo. Here's a portrait and I've just adjusted exposure. It doesn't even have a process. So let's put something like Agfa Vista 400 on this. Okay, looks good. Let's say I wanted to have a little bit of finite control. And I'm like, no, I want that sky to be absolutely perfect. I could add, 
I could add, I could simply add a sky mask up here in masks, or I could take an existing one. Let's say I'd already applied like an elegance mask and I had a sky mask. I can go into the sky mask and you can see it selected the sky. We have the same point color tool now in masks. We actually don't have the ASL, the HSL tool in masks, but it's okay now because we have this point color in masks and it's really good. So look what happens. I take my eyedropper. Let's say I take the darker portion of the sky. So now I've selected that sky. Let's visualize the range and see kind of what I'm covering. I'm going to adjust the range and make it actually a little finer. So it's less affecting down below because what I actually want to do is kind of equalize this sky. Let's turn off the visualize range and look what happens. Now I can do a luminance shift, for example, only on the range that I selected. So I could say, hey, let's do this up here and turn the saturation down a little bit to kind of make the bottom and the top sky match, right? So it doesn't kind of have that vignette -y look at the top. And we just change just like that. That's really amazing. And we have really fine granular controls. And we have them now both in the main settings, the global settings for the image, as well as concentrated, limited to whatever mask you select. And it's really that simple. Now you don't have to be like, oh, I need to use the spot color tool now for everything. The HSL is still great and it gives you the primary color channels that you need to work with. And so let's say you apply a preset and then you go in and you're like, oh no, I want to switch it a little. You can totally still do that. The point color is when you want to get specific. Don't feel like you need to use it on every photo. Go to it when you need it in the global setting or in the mask, and you're going to find that it's amazing. Capture One users has, have raved about this for years, and even though you don't need it on every image, it actually was a very good tool in Capture One, and now it's in Lightroom. Is it better than Capture One? That's, that's debatable. Maybe we'll have to look at that closer in the 2024 review of Lightroom versus Capture One that I do annually. So subscribe and hit that bell icon to stay tuned for that. Hope you guys found this useful. You can, of course, find links to the presets and things like that I mentioned, as well as my free presets in the comments of the video. And we'll see you next time. Get out there and hunt shadows.